I use this because I don't feel like talking that loud. Uh, okay, so yeah, I jumped in here. It's a smaller crowd than last time, that's okay. So, first years or second years? Just first years? Okay, cool. And then second years, the rest of you guys, nice. That's efficiency, see, so it's important to be efficient. That's what we do here. Um, all right, I'm gonna, it's kind of a mix, so I'm gonna run through just the whole thing. And uh, that's cool. It's kind of a little something for everybody. This is a talk called Studying, <laughs> something like that. And I'm Ryan, Ryan McHenry. I'm a third year. Uh, I've been here, well, two years now. This is the beginning of my third year. And there we go. Okay, cool. So let me just outline kind of this whole thing. Uh, I'm going to start. I'm going to tell you just my story in brief. And I'm doing that because I think that my life and everything going on for me outside of med school while I was in med school and the success I was able to have, you know, passing, uh, sort of highlights the, the success of using kind of these methods, right? So this is sort of a, a do as I say, not as I do kind of talk. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start off with a confession and also some stories. So there's a quote from old Bill here, Bill Gates with Microsoft, you know, hire a lazy person to do a difficult job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it, right? It makes sense. Um, I didn't get hired at Microsoft, I was not a lazy person then, but um, anyway, my confession is I'm a lazy person now. Um, so I apologize, uh, it's been my secret for two years, but uh, I got this far, and so anyway, now the world knows I'm, I'm kind of a lazy guy, I apologize. Um, so here's my story, this is my little guy, baby guy Finn, uh, he's the best. So uh, I'm a med student, and you guys know what that is like, first year as you're finding out, you know, it's a busy time, but I'm also a father, which happened the beginning of my second year, and uh, you know, the nine months before that is a fairly big deal also. Um, your partner is, well, at least from my angle, going through a lot, and uh, then a baby is like a ton of stuff. Um, I, my entire second year, I maintained a challenging fish tank, and I just, uh, let's see, next slide. These are my gigantic goldfish, all right, just so you can see, that tank is like way bigger than a bathtub. Uh, those are pond fish. I uh, got them at like a carnival and had them for about five years. They grew into like fish. Um, I had to get rid of them. Couldn't do it. But anyway, uh, the bulk of my second year, um, they put out a lot of nitrogen, a lot of waste, and that tank wasn't cycling, and they were just so gigantic, couldn't even handle it. So I would come home every day from class, and I would change 40 gallons of water, just out, fill it up, buckets, pour it back in. So every day I would just take like an hour to two hours and just throw that in the trash because I was dealing with a fish tank. Um, so yeah, these are kind of things you can have going on. I have a noisy cat, didn't know that until I got to med school. It was like something changed, we moved, and now he just follows me around, he bugs me. And uh, I also live with my girlfriend's parents, so there you go. Um, I didn't know if that was like a professional thing to put up there, but I thought, what the heck, why not? Because, you know, they're... Um, they're like from the country, and uh, I don't know anything about the country because I'm from Santa Cruz, but I guess when you're from the country, you need to like rearrange your furniture all the time. Um, this, this happens to me frequently in my own home. I, I'm like, oh, I, I really like to study. There used to be a table by a window, and it was great. It was out of the way. I'm going to go study at my table. And I show up, and the table's gone, you know. What do you know? So now I've wasted all this time bringing my stuff down. Now I don't know what to do with myself. I bring it all back up. Uh, anyway, and then there's a kind of country where it's like, you know, we don't, we don't need any electronics, but, uh, you know, teach us how to use them. So uh, my day is just at home is just full of, like, weird interruptions all the time, all the time, all the time. So the lesson is don't leave your room, stay indoors, avoid people. Uh, you got to do all those things. But anyway, the point being, I have all this going on outside of school, so I was just like a colossal time waster. Um, that said, using this kind of method, still my, my average on... Um, um, basic sciences, or whatever we're calling that now, F of FOM. So my non-OMM, non-doctoring, this is my science coursework, 85% on my tests, 85%, right? So that's, I just want to illustrate that that's, you know, you can hemorrhage time and still find success. Uh, right, we saw that. So, we talk about when I came into medical school, and you know, this gets you a fair, fair way through medical school, you do be doing great, kind of what I describe as my old, old me, the old method. Um, it's just, it works, but it's really stressful, and it's painful, and that's, that's my opinion of the whole thing. So this is old me when I got here, and for first years, maybe you guys are like that, second years. Maybe some of you are still doing this, and maybe you're in between, I don't know. 
But this is old me with laser vision, looking at one piece of paper, right? I'm gonna read, and so I just kind of grabbed, like, the, the GI packet from the back here. And so this is me, like, page one. I'm gonna just stare at this, and it says Cushing syndrome. So I'm gonna stare at this, and I'm gonna memorize it, and I'm gonna try and recreate it over and over and over and over and over until I can do it without looking at the page at all, right? In the meantime, though, this is medical school. All these other pages are stacking up, you know, and so, for me, this method was just slow. Uh, you can do that, but it's just a lot of late nights. It's a lot of, you know, it's, it's lots and lots of time and effort. That's, that's my point there. So laser vision, uh, we'll never do that again. Um, so when I got here, uh, they gave us a book. Nobody really read it. I looked at like chapter five, and it talked about some ideas. But by the time we were all second years, I kind of noticed everybody was doing a similar thing. Maybe not the same thing, but similar. And so I'm going to highlight that stuff, and I kind of tried to keep it a little bit fluid so that you know you guys can find your own pathway there. Um, but anyway, a lot of these methods and ideas we can borrow, right, because we are memorizers. So we might as well learn from the best. Uh, these guys are professional memorizers. I don't know if anyone's aware, but there's like memory championships. and. Uh, They'll have events like they'll hand them a deck of cards in 20 minutes and they'll say, all right, you're going to memorize the order of this deck of cards. You know, like Jack of Spades, Three of Knight, Kings, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, three of Kings. Anyway, so here's this guy and he's memorizing a deck of cards. And they use techniques, right? They, they're pushing the skill set of memorizing to its farthest. These guys are athletes. And anyway, we are, we're these guys, right? We have a ton of stuff to memorize all the time. So... Some of this stuff is borrowed from them, um, and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more. Here we go. So, this is new me, and new me studies a lot more like weightlifting, okay? Um, so weightlifting, right, it would be cool, like you would, you would have an awesome chest if all you did was bench press all the time, right? And that would be great, except that we have the rest of our body, right? So then you go, you walk around, and everyone knows you missed leg day, because you got little tiny legs and a big chest. And it's just, it's, it's not balanced, right? You're, you're ignoring the bulk of it. And so it's the same thing, like, I would be awesome at biochem if all I did was study biochem all the time, right? But med school, you have pathology, you have histology, you have everything else going on all the time. And so it turns out the brain kind of works more like a weightlifting routine. It likes to study one subject one day and then take a break, study something else. And, and you can kind of just keep stacking subjects like this versus old me, right, which is just trying to force one thing all the time. Um, so it turns out it's better to have like, this rotation. And I'll kind of get into that a little more. Um, and then right here, I just wanted to make a bold statement. I wanted to say that I really believe that medical school, you can find like high success. You know, you, you can score well on four hours a day, like four hours of focus study. Not, you know, you can spend eight hours at the library, but if you're only focused for four of those hours, I mean, that works. But I always tried to like knock out my four hours, go home. And um, I'll talk about that a little more. All oh, right, so my, I'm gonna feel really good again at the end of this talk, because I'm like getting all this stuff off my chest. My other confession is, you know, I had a lot going on. I, I honestly struggled to get to three hours a day. And uh, that's the truth. But again, 85%, right? So numbers are there, 85%. My scores were, were pretty decent, you know, um, in my opinion. That's not, uh, what is that, the, the committee that emails you when you're not great? SPC. Yeah, yeah, that was me. They always wondered what was wrong with me, and I kept telling them about my fatherhood position. And, you know, why don't you just work harder, they said. Well, I'm a lazy guy. Uh, <laughs> I'm. I'm not actually a lazy guy, I just I have to think like a lazy guy because I just don't have time. Um, that's reality. Anyway, so talk a little bit about this whole method and I outlined it as the three pillars and it's not really three pillars, it's kind of more of a cycle thing, but you know, it, it feels good to say the three pillars so I put it up there because I thought that was cool. All right, so number one, spaced repetition. All right, um, that's kind of the new, old me was, Laser vision, one thing all the time, or until as long as it takes. New me, spaced repetition. I'll touch on something once today, I'll put it away. Come back to it tomorrow and see where it's at, you know, and the day after that. And then maybe not look at it for a few days. Um, 
So to me, spaced repetition just means flashcards. To other people, it means going through lectures multiple times. Um, there's, there's a couple different, like our class settled into a couple different methods for spaced repetition, but it's generally one of those two things, and I'll talk about that a little more later. Then there's memory anchors and videos, which second year you guys know all about Pathoma, you guys know about Sketch Medical, and first years, these are programs that you know, you, you will probably come to know quite well. Um, and I'm gonna talk about them here and I probably won't get into the, a ton of detail, but you guys definitely wanna like talk to each other, talk to second years, always just keep talking to everybody all the time. Because um, a lot of this method is, it's, it's, it's a learned skill, you know? Like I didn't boil my study method down to three hours a day on day one. I chipped away at it until I was so efficient that that's what it took. And then third, this is kind of the most subjective skill, uh, unpacking lectures, because it's a little bit different for everybody, but I'm, I'm gonna try and touch on those points. So, like I mentioned, space rep, uh, flashcards. Flashcards is what it meant to me. So generally, Quizlet is my favorite, because with Quizlet, you have to make the cards yourself, and that's a free pass, right? You take a lecture, you turn it into flashcards, that means you've already gone through it, so it's kind of already in your head, and for me, that was worth it. So I would use, I'd use Quizlet because it would make me just kind of run through things versus uh, Automosis is also a great program. It has pre-made flashcards, so you can just find the topic and it will give you pre-made bunch for you to go through. And that works pretty well. It's not going to be 100% in line with your classes, but it's, it's pretty good. I mean, I know people that study exclusively from these things, especially during your last semester, second year. Uh, didn't really look at Toro material, and they still did fine. They just, their kind of, their average was really like all over the place. They either barely passed, or they did really well, or somewhere in the middle, but it was not consistent, but it worked. So that's my point. You can use pre-made cards, and you still be, be just fine. Uh, Anki, another great program. Uh, Firecracker, there's a ton of them. It's kind of, what do you prefer? Uh, you know, it's your choice. Um, but. Flashcards in some form are great. And like I said, the other method which I didn't use too much is just repeatedly going through lecture material over and over and spaced repetition way. Uh, so for flashcards, there, there's, you wanna spend your time efficiently. So there's a way to build a good flashcard. Okay, and uh, so this is kind of my first First try at the flashcard here, right? It was like, <coughs> front side would say something like this, explain the steps in the coagulation cascade. And you're gonna go, okay, well, first, you know, we have some damage going on in the endothelium, and we expose this. But there's too much wiggle room here um, because you're only, you're asking yourself to recall sort of the gist of something, and each time you recall it, uh, you know, you're gonna learn this way, but it's not gonna be as fast as this way. This is called closed reduction. And uh, closed reduction is what a lot of the like, Anki osmosis, those programs have this style of card. And it's just one word, one fact per card, and one, two words removed, right? So this is a much more concise statement. A fact is blank, please put them in, in the fiber. And so what that does is it's simple and it, it helps train the way you think, right? especially if the multiple choice, because that's kind of what we're doing. Nearly fill in the blank or fill in the thought process. Uh, and this is fast. You know, like I have 100 flashcards, it takes me two minutes to five minutes maybe to go through it if I know the deck well. Um, let's see, what was my other point about this? Um, I guess that's all I'm going to say about that. Anyway, close reduction works better. Uh, works better because, here we go, because it's. Um, this is active learning, right? Active learning. And this, this is still active learning, but like I said, there's too much wiggle room. So this is like direct, the more you force yourself to recall that exact thing, the stronger that connection gets, the more you're gonna be able to recall it later. So if you're doing flashcards, close reduction. You know, just best, best return on your, your time spent. Okay, number two, memory anchors. So um, just, Kind of is a, a, a quick summary of how these work. Try to remember the last three things I said, which like, I don't remember the last three things I said. Uh, and you know, if you do, awesome. If you don't, you know, great. That <laughs> might be better for you. But 
the last three things I said versus maybe the last time you went out and had a nice dinner, right? Last time you went out and had a nice dinner, it was me, you know, I remember, I remember where I sat, right? I remember the people I went with, I remember the food I had, I remember that the napkins were folded in strange ways, right? Or maybe the, the, the interior was sort of this funny orange color, or there was a great view. And those are all facts, right? All of those are facts. And they're for free. It's just the brain remembers spaces, right? And I, I might not remember the things I said here, but I'm going to remember that I started around 12.15. I remember the room, and it was about this many people. And those are all facts. So if you, if you tie things to that, it's, like, it's almost like getting memory for free. Um, and so that's what memory anchors are. And that's, that's one of the things those professional card memorizers do, is uh, they'll recreate like a place like their house in their mind and I was read, read an article about this and they're talking about how they basically like are walking through their own house and then they're going to remember that the light switch for them associates with maybe like the, the number eight right so it's going to be an eight of clubs so, so that's how they memorize a, a deck of cards in 20 minutes and that's where sketchy and picmonic these are great tools uh, if you're not using them you should try them out um, Sketchy, like for me, this is a TMZ S and B, which is an antibiotic drug. And like, I literally know that these can cause drug-induced lupus because there's a wolf in the picture, you know. And for a while, that's kind of going to be, you know, knowing the facts is is important. Later, I'll replace that with actually knowing why, you know. But for now, that's what I remember. I know there's sulfur drugs because these girls are throwing eggs, things like that. But this whole picture is just facts. And when you sit down on a test, it's amazing like how this recall works. You just remember the remember the image. And uh, anyway, so Sketchy is great for bugs and drugs. Um, for me, particularly, I didn't like this so much. It was just the the first Google image that came up. But anyway, it works great. I I'd recommend it. Picmonic is okay. A lot of people hate Picmonic, and I understand it's a lot to deal with, and it's really really bizarre. But I used it because it helped me remember just autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant, X-linked. And it, for me, that, it was worth it just to recall all that stuff about all of the diseases that are in first aid. Um, and then, yeah, th this meme has been going around, but I just happened to find this. I was trying to find this guy's picture. And like, Pathoma, I just I can't say enough about. So that's yeah, my third confession is that I love Dr. Fitter. Um, he's, he's just, you know, He's the guy who, in my opinion, thought about, okay, how am I going to say something really clearly, one time through, highlight the facts you need to know, and then tell you why. And so I just, efficiency-wise, like I would say just get Pathoma, you know, just get it and watch it. And it saves me the hassle of reading something, looking at images, and then thinking, I feel like I've got the right idea, and then coming to class later and finding out, oh, no, I had the wrong idea the whole time, and it actually works like this. So I would just rather not spend that time. Uh, this guy tells me how it goes, first try, and then, you know, then I get down to memorizing facts. But uh, Pat Boma, yeah, it's great. Videos are awesome for clarity and all of that. Um, so last skill we're looking at here is kind of, I've talked a lot, of, uh, talked a lot about outside resources. Um, but of course, we go to Toro, right? So we got to deal with Toro material because that's, this is where we learn. This is what we're tested on. Um, so this whole process of unpacking lectures, it, it's somewhat personal, right? Because all of us have a different way of, of thinking about what's important. And so, like I said, when I was spending three hours a day studying, I was doing it um, based on kind of this method for me, uh, you get a feel for what you want to pull from lectures, but I'm generally looking, just taking the lecture, looking for anything that's bulleted, anything that's highlighted in red, you know, or anything that is red, anything that's highlighted, anything that stands out. So I just take that, turn it into a flashcard. Um, and so maybe for me that means like um, the three, right, um, meningitis, you have fever, headache, stiff neck. So for me that's going to be three flashcards. The, the three, you know, the triad for meningitis is, and then I'll have one flashcard that's blank, headache, stiff neck. So that'll be fever, headache, stiff neck. Second card, triad of meningitis, fever, blank, stiff neck, fever, headache, stiff, right? So that, and I have those three cards in my deck. So anything that has a list of symptoms, I'm making that many cards. And by the end of it, you know, it's sort of this magical process where you've suddenly memorized a whole list of things by just having multiple cards, that's my recommendation there. 
Um, this is just fun, fun little math project here. Uh, I don't know, it's a lot of people a second here, you've heard of this guy, Broden Cephalon. He has the massive Anki deck, which almost covers all of med school. It's about 16,000 cards. And I just, it helps me kind of like, oh yeah, that's not so bad. If I think about, you know, uh, I did a quick calculation. I gave us four months of time away from school. So in two years, with four months off, 16,000 facts, it's about 27 facts a day, every day. So I don't know, for me, I, that's nice. <laughs> I think that's uh, reassuring, because 27 facts a day is not that bad. And all of a sudden, after two years, you got 16,000, and, you know, and then you take four. Um, so in putting this kind of whole process together, this is just uh, another comparison. This is old me, this is new me. Old me did all these things. Um, people in my class, they'd always laugh. I mean, I'm a little older, so the last time I was in school, it really was all books and paper. And so when I came back to med school and there was no books and no paper, it was a little bit weird for me, but people in my class used to laugh because they, they, oh, I know one rhymes at the library because there's like a hundred notebooks laid out across the desk. And so anyway, that's, that's how when I got here, this is what I was doing. And now new me is kind of like space repetition, memory anchors, unpacking lectures. So I don't do much other than for that, you know? And again, it's because I'm a lazy person and I think that this is the easiest way to get things done. And you probably get sick of flashcards, but I just, I, I can't, I couldn't think of a better way to do it. So, um, in transitioning from old me to new me, there was a point where I felt like it was this kind of leap of faith. It was just, you know, I, I know that it works when I stare at something for hours and hours and hours and hours and just force myself to do it, no breaks, never, just keep going. Uh, and then just kind of the day came where so much stuff was going on in my life, I didn't have time to really put it in for this one particular test, so I just did flashcards. I just went, you know what? I've heard a lot about this, I've been trying to transition, and I'll just do it. So I made only flashcard decks for that whole test, and that's the only thing I studied, and it worked. You know, I passed. And so I thought, okay, well, I'm not going back because that, just on me, it was less stress. It felt way better, you know, to, to work through something that's, you know, this, right, as opposed to struggling so hard on a single piece of paper and, and writing and cramping my hand and all of that. And so that was my, my leap of faith. So this is why I say it's not three colors. It's, it's more like just, you know, you're going around and around and around and around. And I just did this on repeat over and over and over. And like anything else, you get better at it with time. And so anyway, yeah. Uh, you can start here. You can start here. You can start here. It's kind of something different for everybody. Some people, like for me, I would always start with the lectures, turn the lectures into flashcards, use the flashcards to memorize the facts, and when I was confused about what was going on, I'd use memory anchors and videos to help reinforce my understanding. But, you know, some people like to just go to Anki and not even look at lecture materials, start with flashcards, and then use, you know, sketching your path or anything like that to help keep those facts down, and then sometimes come back to lectures. Some people like to only look at lectures not really make flashcards, but just keep doing passes on the lecture material and kind of quizzing themselves as they go. Uh, anyway, so it's kind of a circular process, and that's that's what I would do. Um, well, the first first one I said, but anyway, it, you got options, so play around with it. You got time. Don't worry about that part. Definitely find what works for you. I wanted to just bring this up because again, I'm a lazy person, right? So I like to take my breaks. Got to take breaks. Um, and old me, again, used to just stare at that piece of paper and just, you know, Ryan, you're doing this until it's done. And so I would make myself just do it for, you know, four or five hours and it would hurt and it was painful and I wasn't happy, but, you know, hey, you got to study. Um, actually, it turns out that the brain likes to take breaks. Um, and especially nowadays, right, like I have emails and you have Facebook and you have like text and we've all heard this, you know, we're all, we were super distracted all the time. Um, yeah, um, but anyway, <laughs> there's this thing, this Pomodoro method, which has the breaks built in. So you try to work up to 50 minute hours, so you study 50 minutes straight, and then you take the 10 minute break, which is cool, because you know, you gotta have breaks. Uh, but you start with uh, 25 and five. So what I would do is I'd go to the library, I'd set a timer on my phone, and I would study for 25 minutes, and then I would stop, and then you got five minutes to do whatever you want. And then you come back and you do 25 more minutes. And that's really not that bad. Like, I'd always look at first, right? And you're like, oh my God, I've been studying so hard, and it's been 
four minutes. Okay. And, you know, and it's kind of, it's easy to talk yourself into keeping at it when it's not that much time. And all of a sudden it's 25 minutes and it's like, oh, yes, okay. I can relax. And um, the rule here is you want to, you focus for 25 minutes. And then when you take that break, you don't want to like play Call of Duty or something that you have to hyper focus on because it, it looks like now the brain will start to dump material to maintain that level of focus. So if you just put 25 minutes into working at something to get it in your memory, and then you focus harder on something like a video game or like, uh, well, I don't know what else you do with your spare time. Um, changing your fish tank water, no. Um, uh, you're gonna try, your brain will attempt to remember that material and so you're gonna lose some of that. So you want your break period to be like more relaxed than you're studying. So take a walk or stretch or I don't know. I mean, I play video games sometimes on my breaks and I can't say that it helped me or hurt me, but uh, I don't know, I just do what the book said. So take a relaxing break. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, oh, right. So the other great thing about Pomodoro is, right, like I'm a lazy guy, so I gotta do lazy guy stuff. I have to work 50 minutes per hour and it still counts as an hour. So that looks even worse, right? When I tell you I only worked for three hours, that means I only worked for two and a half hours. And so, I don't know, uh, but it still works, right? 85%, 85%. Um, so let's see, yeah, yeah, there we go, right? And so there's brain, brain likes this. Brain's happy to take breaks. So if you take nothing away from that, do take breaks. Don't force yourself to study constantly all day because it's, just, it's less efficient than, than spending time relaxing once in a while. For me, this was great. Uh, I worked my way up to 50 minutes. I'd go 50 minutes, take 10 minutes off, 50 minutes, 10 minutes off. Maybe in the second year, I'd wander around the library and accidentally spend like 30 minutes talking to nobody. Uh, anyway, that, but, but that's Pomodoro. Recommend it. Works good. And so this is a, the complete method here. Um, right, we have the same cycle going around, helping us memorize stuff, and then this is the timer, the all important timer in the middle. There we go. Uh, all right, so second years, right? First years too, but you know, nobody, nobody worry about boards for a while. It's not, not that big a deal. <laughs> um, anyway, I just wanted to, to say that using these methods, right? Spaced repetition, uh, memory anchors, and then breaking down lectures. But by the time it comes to getting two boards, all those flashcards, those are going to help you remember, right? And if you if you can touch on those periodically, then those facts are going to stay there, and you may not remember 100%. But from the moment I started using this system with spaced repetition, memory anchors, and breaking down the lecture slides, when I sat down for boards, I remembered that stuff really clearly, and it came back really fast. Versus like the first year when I didn't know what I was doing, like I didn't know what dilated cardiomyopathy was anymore. Like, I remember what BMP or MP did, of like why they're there. Uh, this stuff was just gone. Um, so, uh, carrying on space repetition, and by the time you sit down for boards, it's, it's like you're halfway there already. You just kind of got to review it, you know, take your breaks, do lazy person stuff, and then you're taking your test. Um, anyway, so you're, you're, I guess what I want to say here is you can watch a YouTube video and figure out how to study for boards or how to make a board study plan. Or you can do what I did, you know, which is just purchase a program. I bought Osmosis specifically because it has a uh, board study. It has a program in it. You just tell it when you want to take boards and what you're willing to do. And it spits out just, you know, do this on this day and you just check everything off. And so for me, that was the best because I didn't have to really worry and think about it. I just put my full trust in this computer program told me how to take boards, right? Which is a little scary, but hey, why not? Um, and then I know Kaplan, they're expensive, but again, it's med school, so I don't know. It's worth it to me, shoot. Um, so if that's your thing, yeah, buy a study plan. Let it guide you through boards. Um, if not, make your own, you know. Um, daily reps, that's something I forgot to mention, but that's another thing a lot of these programs do. I know Anki has it, Osmosis has it, and those are the only two I'm really familiar with. But each flashcard you take, it will ask you how, like, did you know this? And like, how well do you feel you know it? Which is pretty basic. You just click two things, you get real, real fast at it. And it will give you a stack of cards 
each day when you get up in the morning, it'll be there. And it's just like old stuff. It just keeps coming back. Um, and I, I got used to that. I would just kind of, a lot of times I'd be trying to get, get to sleep at night and be like, oh man, I got to do that daily rep deck. Because it'll be like, well, you know, 100 to 300 cards some days. But then I got way better at doing it, like kind of all the time. I would be standing in line or, um, well, yeah, what else do I do? Walk, walk in places, try not to bump into stuff. But just doing those daily reps, um, when I studied that material again, it was just, it was so much, it was solid, much more solid than, than anything I studied in another method. So again, daily reps, flashcards, worth doing. Um, when you do study for board, it's a good idea to watch sketchy, kind of, again, whatever parts worked for you. Um, Pathoma is great again. The, when I went through it this summer, it was like a new level of understanding. You know, you go through two years and you try to just kind of memorize what's going on. And then when I prepared for boards, it was like, oh, okay, that's why the heart and the kidneys are in communication, you know, and that's why the lungs are so important for regulating the rest of the body. So it's, for me, it was like a really, I wish I had more time, honestly, because I, I could have put together all this stuff, but that's okay. I got like a bunch of more years of school to do that. Um, and then, yeah, of course you want to do Q banks. Q banks are important. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, this is like you know just a little graphic for what I did for boards. My my whole board plan. Just look at first aid. Look at my resources. For me, it was osmosis and sketchy. And then do Q banks. And then you know once a week or so, twice a week, try and try and um, do do some repetition on things so that you know they they stay in your brain. And uh, let me see here. Oh yeah. So this is my yeah. This is my my picture of board, and that this is a coffee stain. But anyway, um, this is how I feel boards are because I was here last year and I sat here and a third year guy was up here and he was just like boards are you know they're they're not that big a deal and he was just like dude come on uh, I didn't believe him either and you guys probably don't believe me. You know, you're right, there's this whole, like, four weeks is enough. And you're just like, no, four weeks is not enough. Um, and I, I felt that way, you know, I was just like, this, we need more time, or, you know, whatever. And I was pretty angry about it. And now I feel bad because literally in the middle of the board exam, I was just like, uh, yeah, this is actually not that bad. So, you know, I hope you guys can believe me to some extent. It, it is enough time. Uh, but anyway, this is what I feel like boards is. This is the guy we're scared of. We're afraid of the shadow. You know, this is a big, scary shadow. And if you saw that coming, you'd be like, oh, man, look at this crazy knight with horns on his head or whatever. But by the time I was done, uh, this is me here looking at blood. I'm like, oh, well, that wasn't so bad. You know, uh, it was a fair test. That's, that's all, that's what I mean by that. Uh, everything I missed on board was just kind of entirely my fault. But it, it was, it just, it went better than I thought. And I thought for sure it was going to be awful. So, yeah, I know you don't believe me because I didn't believe me when I was there. But, you know, think about believing me. That's all. Um, yeah, and that's kind of the end here. I just saw this on the door of the office I hang out in now. It's going to be okay, right? Guys, don't worry about it. I mean, worry about it, but don't really, you know. And I wouldn't tell you a fibula, so. Everything is true here uh, about that. And then I know at the end of lectures they write Finn. You know, it's a fun, like, foreign word to put up there. Like, it's over, but this is my baby Finn. So Finn, is, this is the end. Um, that's everything I had to say. Uh, don't know if that was as good as the first lecture I gave here. But, uh, yeah, how about questions? What do we think? Yes? None. Um, and I keep saying I'm a lazy guy. I you know, didn't find time. I tried. I really did. The, the first week of spring semester, I started to do board review. And I was like up till 11 30 or midnight every night. But I broke my own rule. I studied for class and I studied for boards. And I just couldn't do it. I mean, that, that's what it came down to. And it was, it was yeah. I, had to stop, and then I listened to other people. Kind of, well, this is from 30 years. Some of the fellows that were here at the time.
time. And a lot of them were saying, you know, I just couldn't find the time, so I didn't. I just focused on school, and then for dedicated, I sat down and I studied for board. Um, that's what I did. Um, my my personal suggestion is if you're gonna start early, I would say start in January of your second year. You know, wait until January. Um, because you know, your your fall semester with neuro, there's a lot going on there and it's really important stuff. Like neuro is a huge thing, especially on Comlex. Uh, I've read I read in a forum that somebody felt like Comlex was a neuro exam with other medical ideas sprinkled in. And that's yeah, I can see how that's true. Um, so you, you know, osteopathy, man, we make our cranial nerves, we like our skull, and there's a lot of testable material there. So um, medical school is like a big first pass on all the material, so it's worth taking a detailed first pass. And if you can do any one thing, it would be get some space repetitions in. So if you're building flashcard decks, when you have time, just look at an old one. You know, or if you're you like me, I used osmosis, so I would just do what it said daily, which is just look at 100 to 300 flashcards, right? Um, <coughs> And so just like a small, small effort, you know, but if you want, yeah, I, we had people that did key banks all year, second year, and, you know, Dr. Hartwig will come pat you on the back because your score will be really high. And that is going to work for some people. Great. Uh, it wasn't me. It wasn't most of us. So, yeah, it's a long answer to a short question. Anybody else? All right. Well, hey, I'm going to stand up here for a few more minutes, so if you need anything, I don't know, ask me. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. <laughs>